Um, okay, so we're back in our notebooks on the same page we were on yesterday, but we're going to do some practice problems from 4 4 today. So I want you to draw a line and label this 4 4. And I am going to attempt to put the book under the camera so you guys can see the problems. They're right here. Okay, that didn't work. <laughs> That's working. Okay, so we're gonna use what we practiced yesterday, cross multiplying, to solve a few proportions. So if there's an equal sign in between two ratios, and it doesn't have a question mark, we know it is a proportion and that these two equal each other. And just like we talked about yesterday, you guys know that the rules for equivalent fractions are the same for equivalent ratios. So I can look at this one here, which is number one in our textbook, and it says six over 10 is equal to 36 over X. And our goal is to find out what the X is. And you guys know from past experience with equivalent fractions that if I multiply six times something to get 36, I also would multiply the 10 times something to find out what the x is, yes? Yes. Yeah. What am I multiplying the six by? Six. Yep. So if I multiply this by six and this by six, then I'm gonna have my x is equal to 60. Okay? But we can also use cross multiplication because sometimes the numbers aren't friendly. That's how we refer to numbers that we can look at and find something like this. What if it was six and some crazy big number that you didn't know how to multiply and get to it? You could still find this out. So I want you guys to write the same problem again. Only this time we're gonna use cross multiplication to try to find it. If I cross multiply this, 10 times 36 is now equal to 6x. We can use cross multiplication and division to find out what our x is. This is 360 is equal to 6x. Now I have a one step equation and I, if I want to find out what the x is, I want to get it by itself, so I would divide both sides by what, everybody? Six. Yep, we divide by 6, and we end up with 60 equals x. And we can do that with all of these problems here. So if I did 7 times 5, we'd get 35 divided by 4, we're going to get a decimal. When you look at this problem down here, let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see it better. Maybe. There we go. Can you look at four and find out times what gets us to five? That's why I'm talking about friendly numbers. We don't know what four times blank to get to five, but we can find out what that P is simply by taking your calculator and cross multiplying. What's across from each other? Seven and five. Seven and five. So we're going to multiply seven times five. And we're going to divide by the number that's lonely, which in this case is four. And we're going to end up with 8.75. Okay? Now the main reason I wanted to show you the textbook is I want to talk about how to set up the word problems. So number five says a stack of $2,451 bills weighs five pounds. How much does a stack of $1,471 bills weigh? Well, we're gonna make what we call like a word map. Let's list that this is number five. What are the two things that we're comparing here? You have to look at the words in the word problem. We're comparing $1 bills to what? Pounds. Pounds. So let's make a little ratio. Dollar bills 
two pounds. You always want to start off with a ratio that has words in it that's telling you how you're going to set this up. So a stack of $2,451 bills weighs five pounds. How would we write this ratio? Like this. And the nice part about having this word ratio is you don't have to keep writing the labels that go with these numbers every single time. We know that any number we put on the top is going to be dollar bills, and any number we put on the bottom is going to be pounds. And then the question is, how much does a stack of $1,471 bills weigh? So let's set up a proportion by putting the equal sign. And where would we put this 1,470? On the top because it goes with the dollar bills. What's the question asking? How much does it weigh? That means we don't know what the pounds are, so we're gonna put an X there. Those are some pretty big numbers, so let's go ahead and cross multiply with our calculator. And we're gonna cross multiply five times 1,470 and we get 7,350. And what are we gonna divide by? Yeah, 2,450. I always think of the number that's across from the variable as like the lonely one. That's the one you divide with. And we end up with three. So the answer to this problem would be three pounds. Okay. So when you're looking at the word problems, the first thing you want to look at is what's being compared. What are the two things that I'm being asked to look at and set up a word ratio. Then go back through the problem and set up the ratios and find where the empty place is. And whatever the question is asking you to find, that's where you put your X. Okay? So we're going to practice today on page 228 with problems 6 through 19 and I'm scooting this up because the due date for this contract because this is the last thing we're doing on it is Tuesday okay